Metroid is a game that really set the theme for an entire genre. Besides Castlevania, it is the namesake of the two-dimensional non-linear platforming game genre. But since that's a mouthful, everyone's taken to calling it a Metroidvania. The series itself is heavily based on the film franchise Alien. Metroid is the story of a female protagonist in a powered suit moving across the galaxy, hunting down and eradicating the vile alien menace known as the Metroids, a race of jellyfish-like parasites often used by pirates and even the government for various and nefarious reasons. As fun as all of this sounds, the one thing the Metroid series has never been good at doing was keeping a coherent timeline of events as multiple games with multiple storylines crop up on a regular basis. So far, out of the 11 games in the franchise, the one considered to be Metroid 5 is actually the most recent, with the upcoming Metroid Prime 4 being considered the seventh game in the franchise. So to make sense of it, we're going to dive into the world of Metroid and get together a proper timeline of events. So put on your power suits and ready your ice beam and missiles. Let's get into it. Background Every hero needs a start, and this start is found in written form, in the shape of a manga. Samus Aran's story starts when she's just three years old. Living on the planet K2L, a colony of Earth, she has a mostly carefree life. The planet is not long after visited by the Chozo, a race of highly advanced aliens that appear to be shaped like birds. Despite their unsettling appearance, Samus starts a little friendship with one of the race's elders, who is known as Old Bird. The race has come there in search of a special crystal that was used for space travel, known as a Floraltite. During their time here though, a group of space pirates led by a space dragon known as Ridley appears. And before you ask, yes, this character is named after the director of the Alien movie. This group of space pirates attacks the planet, hoping to kill its inhabitants. Samus, being ever so naive at the time, runs up to Ridley and wants to become his friend, but instead he tries to kill her and accidentally kills her mother instead, though he's not exactly remorseful. Samus's father also dies in this battle, having sacrificed his life to destroy Ridley's flagship. Samus would be rescued by Old Bird, who would bring her back to his home planet, named Zebus. To help her cope with the harsh conditions of the planet, she's given a power suit and has Chozo DNA grafted into her system from two sources. One from a Chozo named Grey Bird and another from an unknown donor. Here she trains for years, surpassing normal human levels of athleticism by age 14. After proving herself as a warrior by showing compassion, she's allowed to join the Galactic Federation. As she got there, she ended up joining the Star Trackers, which was a super elite unit within the organization. On her first mission, she was sent to another Earth colony attacked and enslaved by space pirates, so I imagine that it opened that little black box in the corner for her. While on G-Grad, she witnessed a human girl about to be executed by the space pirates for being too weak to work. So, taking matters into her own hands, her unit engaged the pirates and managed to catch one. The space pirate was brought to be interrogated by Adam Malkovich, a man who later would become known as Samus's CO. It was revealed that the attack on Jigrad was a diversion, and that the true targets were Zebus and the Chozo. Despite receiving standby orders, Samus rushed back to her people to save them, with a little leeway being granted to her by Adam. Arriving there with their squad, they realized that these space pirates really just wanted the Chozo technology, and that they had entered a pact with the Mother Brain and a Chozo named Grey Voice who had been a surrogate father to Samus during her life on Zebus. When she got there, she discovered that Mother Brain had become the new leader of the space pirates, and tried to get Samus to join the dark side with promises of power and influence. Samus refused, however, and was forced into battle against Ridley, during which she suffered from a severe bout of PTSD that made her beg her comrades to put her out of her misery before she could be killed by Ridley. However, she did manage to overcome this. Grey Voice, seeing his adopted daughter's strength, decided to switch sides again and attempted to destroy the Mother Brain. However, Mother Brain called Ridley to its side and Ridley managed to kill Grey Voice. Samus would aid in the evacuation of Zebus and its remaining Chozo. However, the telepathic voice of Greybird told her to use her powers and oppose evil, and gave her words of encouragement. After escaping, the remaining Chozo, as well as Samus and her squad, were rescued by Adam. After this, she spent her time on Adam's warship. Here, her relationship with Adam and his brother Ian, as well as Anthony Higgs, was established. However, after Adam sacrificed his brother to save 300 innocents, she left the organization as a whole, feeling inexperienced and naive. It was here that she made her living as a bounty hunter. She became very good at what she did and began to hunt space pirates. 
After a few years, the Galactic Federation decided it wanted to study Metroids. However, the research vessel was attacked by space pirates and the Metroid was stolen. With the threat of these space pirates increasing, the Galactic Federation attempted to put the pirates down on their new base of operations, Planet Zebes. However, they failed. Realizing they would need an elite operative to do the job for them, they hired Samus, who was more than willing to fulfill the duties presented to her. Her objectives were simple, destroy all Metroids and destroy Mother Brain. Metroid 1 Zero Mission the first game, chronologically in the franchise, originally released for the Nintendo Entertainment System and later re-released on the Game Boy Advance as Metroid Zero Mission, the game follows Samus Aran as she returns to planet Zebes to face off against the space pirates and the Metroid menace that they control. To do so, she must first enter the base of the space pirates where she proceeds to defeat Kraid and Ridley, gaining access to the Brinstar depths below the surface of Zebes. From here, she attempts to enter the facility and discovers that the cloning of Metroids has caused an explosion in their population. This, however, resulted in the death of almost every space pirate scientist in the facility, with Mother Brain surviving due to the protection the Chozo had built around her. Samus utilizes her ice beam to first freeze the Metroids before striking them with a missile to kill them. She then makes it to Mother Brain, where the two begin to battle. In the end, Samus manages to defeat the massive biological computer, which causes a self-destruct timer to begin in the facility. Samus manages to escape. In the Zero Mission game, there is an extension to the story in that after escaping, the space pirates manage to shoot Samus down, causing her to lose all of her powers in her suit. Reduced to her Zero Suit, she seeks to hijack a ship from the space pirate battleship that shot her down. She fails though and flees to Chozodia, a group of ancient ruins where she must take a test to see if she's worthy of the suit she had. She proves more than worthy and is given an upgraded suit stronger than the one she had before. She makes her way back to the battleship where she manages to defeat the robotic weapon shaped like her nemesis called Mecha Ridley. The ship also begins to self-destruct because yes, and Samus manages to escape with a hijacked vessel. Metroid Prime the first game in the Prime series, it takes place three years after her victory on Zebes. Receiving a distress signal from pirates, she heads back towards the Zebes star system and finds the frigate Orphean. Entering, she finds plenty a Zebesian space pirate ready to whack her, but nobody just whacks Samus. She discovers that they've been doing experiments with a strange mutagenic substance known as Phazon. After going through the ship, she finds that the ship has been heavily damaged by a queen parasite that has been mutated by Phazon. She manages to kill it, but doing so causes damage to the main core of the ship, which results in the ship getting ready to explode. She attempts to escape, but along the way she discovers Ridley, the space pirate she thought she killed in the previous game, and he'd been heavily upgraded into a cyborg. In the ensuing scuffle with the cyborg dragon, her suit ends up damaged. She and he both end up heading for the planet below, Talon 4. While on the planet, Samus learns that 50 years prior, a strange meteorite landed on the planet, bringing with it the substance known as the Great Poison, later dubbed Phazon by the pirates. After Samus' victory on Zebes, the remaining pirates fled to Talon 4 to mine this substance that could be used to increase their fighting prowess. Samus, upon arriving there, discovers the spirits of Chozo who were here during the events of the Leviathan's fall and managed to seal it up within a cipher. She then must collect the artifacts. During the course of this, she eventually defeats the Omega Pirate Upsilon. Defeating it, it melts on her suit, transforming it into the Phazon suit. With this suit, she finds that she can now tolerate coming into contact with the substance. Returning to the Impact Crater, she defeats Ridley again and prepares to enter. Once inside, she faces the Metroid Prime, a massive armored creature that is a Metroid transformed by the Phazon. Destroying its armor, she witnesses its true form that appears to be a jelly-like creature. Now forced to use Phazon-based weaponry exclusively, she overloads its system. Just as it's about to die, it claims Samus's Phazon suit and uses it to stabilize itself, being reborn as the menacing Dark Samus. Metroid Prime Hunters In this game, Samus, along with various other bounty hunters, are drawn to the far reaches of space in search for an ultimate power. During this time, she encounters multiple bounty hunters, including Silex. While here, she discovers that she must find the eight octoliths to uncover the oubliette. During her many battles with both creatures and other bounty hunters, Samus learns of a prophecy and a secret history by the former inhabitants of the sector that a massive meteorite came down from the skies, carrying with it a monstrous being known as Goria. By the time they manage to activate the oubliette, Samus is way behind and the other bounty hunters beat her to it. That being said, they accidentally awaken Goria and end up being defeated. 
Samus alone faces off against this threat and manages to destroy it in accordance with a prophecy. She ends up escaping alongside the other bounty hunters, the whole thing likely being a lie perpetuated by Goria in an effort to get others to unseal him. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes In this game, Samus is sent on a task by the Federation force to Aether in an effort to rescue some of its forces. Upon reaching the planet, she discovers the bodies of the forces she was sent to rescue, but in a turn of events, they are reanimated and attack her. As she goes through the area, she ends up seeing a dark doppelganger of herself that she dubs Dark Samus. She ends up discovering that the planet was struck by a meteor not too unlike the one on Talon 4. This caused the planet to become dimensionally unstable and resulted in the planet having two sides to it, a light aether and a dark aether. Coming into contact with one of the last of the Luminoth race, Umos, he informs her of the war between their race and the Ing, a race from another dimension that have been fighting over the planet's energy source, the Light of Aether. She must help transfer the Light of Aether with three controllers. Upon doing so, she is gifted the Light Suit, which she then must use to defeat the Emperor Ing. Heading to Dark Aether, she defeats the Emperor, takes the last of the Aether they had there, and begins to escape as it collapses. As she's leaving, however, she's faced by Dark Samus again, whom she dispatches by overloading it with Phazon, seemingly killing the thing. Not. She escapes Dark Aether and restores the technology she took from the Luminoth before leaving the planet again. Metroid Prime 3 Corruption Six months later, she's called in by the Galactic Federation over the planet Narayan, along with three other bounty hunters, Rundus, Gandreda, and Gore. They're tasked with delivering a machine to the Aurora units, which are biological supercomputers which may or may not be the Galactic Federation's attempt to recreate Mother Brain. As they ready for their task, Narayan's main base is overrun by space pirates. As it turns out, there is a leviathan headed for the planet's surface from the planet Phase that will soon cover the entire planet in Phazon. Samus and the others rush to reach the super cannon to destroy the big poisonous rock, but during the battle, Samus faces Meta Ridley once again. As the battle ensues, Samus manages to activate the cannon before the leviathan can come into contact with the planet's surface, saving the planet. However, she soon collapses once again after realizing that somehow Dark Samus returned. A month later, Samus wakes up to realize that somehow her body is making Phazon all on its own, though it seems that there are no negative side effects as of now. She's given special technology to help her manage it and told that her compatriots were sent to three different planets, Brio, Elysia, and the homeworld of the pirates. As it turns out, while Narayan had been saved, these other three planets were struck with leviathans. Sadly, the other three bounty hunters have lost contact with the Federation, hinting that something may have happened to them. Samus is sent to investigate and complete their missions if they're no longer capable of it. She first stops at Brio. Discovering that two shield generators were set up to seal off the Leviathan, Samus must destroy each generator to get to it. She discovers that Rundus, who had been sent here, was still alive, but something was wrong with him. She discovers that her Phazon corruption actually does have negative effects, in that if she overuses its power of hyper mode, she could lose her mind and end up under Dark Samus's control. Sadly, the same has happened to Rundus, and after a harsh battle, Rundus was killed and absorbed by Dark Samus. Afterward, she enters the Leviathan and destroys it and its corrupted war golem, saving the planet. After this, she heads to Elysia where she encounters Gore. In a battle with him, the Aurora unit she had just repaired was damaged. Defeating Gore, she was unable to stop Dark Samus from absorbing him. After this, she's told that the Galactic Federation ship Valhalla had been discovered and was asked to investigate. Upon doing so, she found it abandoned, save corpses and infected monsters. After returning to Elysia, she is tasked with the AUs to deliver a bomb to the Leviathan to destroy it, which she manages to do. Finally, she heads to the pirate homeworld, where Gandreda has sent a distress signal. Going there, she discovers that the planet is nigh uninhabitable due to the acid rain, but a surviving Galactic Federation trooper tells her how to get around it. As it turns out though, this trooper was actually Gandreda in disguise, who had also been fully corrupted. Samus fights her, and in the end, she as well is absorbed by Dark Samus. Samus then makes way for a Galactic Federation assault force and leads a squad in to destroy the Leviathan Meteor within. During this battle, she faces off once again against Ridley, who had been upgraded into his Omega form. After defeating him, the Leviathan was destroyed, though Samus was now so corrupted that she was glowing with Phazon. With this done, intel came in that the space pirates had been using a massive leviathan as a starship, and now the Galactic Federation was chomping at the bit just to eradicate it. Samus tagged along, and when a wormhole opened a phase, Samus went through. 
Landing planet side, Samus was overloaded with Phazon and began to enter hyper mode in hopes of not being completely corrupted. There, she would face Dark Samus and a stolen Aurora unit that was linked to the planet's core. After destroying the Aurora unit and Dark Samus once and for all, unless she didn't, which seems to happen a lot, the planet Phase began to collapse. Escaping the planet, she found that with the destruction of Phase, all Phazon in the cosmos was eradicated, including that which she had inside of herself. As she mourned her friend's loss, she set off to the stars once again as a ship followed after. Metroid Prime Federation Force In this game, Samus is captured by the space pirates in the aftermath of corruption. The Galactic Federation's Federation Force unit is sent to rescue her. They travel across the Bermuda system and find Samus having had her size increased and her mind controlled. However, she's defeated by the Federation Force and she's then freed of the mind control. As she rescues the team multiple times, the Federation Force finds a Metroid egg and takes it for themselves. Doing so, they take it to a facility for research, but the facility is then attacked by Silux from the game Metroid Prime Hunters and hatches the baby Metroid in order to steal it. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond The fourth installment of the Metroid Prime series. Sadly, there's not much to tell you about this one yet as it has not released yet, but it will likely feature Silux as either the main antagonist or at least as one of the primary antagonists. We'll likely get to see a bit more about the baby Metroid he stole, though that seems to happen a lot in Metroid games, so don't expect it to become a new Metroid Prime. After all, Phazon is gone from the universe, right? Regardless, chances are Samus doesn't die here because this isn't the last game in the timeline, so unless they want to create an alternate universe where she loses, chances are it has a happy ending. Metroid 2 Return of Samus aka Metroid Samus Returns This game sees Samus having to travel to the planet SR388 where Metroids have seemingly run wild. While exploring the depths of the planet, she must face off against various ancient technology used by the Chozo. To advance deeper into the depths of the planet, Samus must defeat various Metroids, including their evolutions, as the Metroid you know and love is technically just its earliest evolution. Subsequent evolutions see the creature take on a hard shell, and some of them even become humanoid creatures with incredible strength. In the end, she faces off against a dragon-like Metroid evolution known as the Queen Metroid. Upon its extermination, she discovers a little baby Metroid that seems to be almost playful and decides to spare it. She then uses it to escape. The baby Metroid doesn't have a name, but I had canon its name to be Lil Pop Rock, since that's exactly what it does. Also, it is cute as heck. Returning to the surface in the remake, Samus is attacked by Proteus Ridley, who tries to kidnap Pop Rock, but Samus fights his ugly ass off and secures her charge. She then takes the creature to the Space Science Academy for research. Super Metroid Samus receives a distress signal from the Space Academy where she left Pop Rock and returns to find the place blown to smithereens with Ridley having come to take the Metroid for himself. The Academy begins to self-destruct and so Samus boards her vessel and chases after Ridley, who makes way for Planet Zebus. Back on her old homeworld, she begins searching the inner workings of the planet for Ridley and discovers the operation she ended in Zero Mission was now back in action, with Ridley, a revived Kraid, and two new generals, Fantoon and Dragon, working on cloning Metroids. Additionally, Mother Brain has been repaired and restored to working order. Samus would enter the facility, defeat the generals, and then make her way to Mother Brain. Along the way, she destroyed many Metroids until she was attacked by a massive Metroid that she surmised was actually Lil Pop Rock that had somehow been turned into Big Pop Rock by experiments. She engaged Mother Brain in battle, and after defeating the first phase as she had years earlier, she was startled to realize that Mother Brain had been heavily upgraded to the point that she could no longer defeat her. With Samus on death's door, Pop Rock proceeded to suck energy from Mother Brain and then give it to Samus, re-energizing her. Angered, Mother Brain eradicated Pop Rock. Samus, enraged, used Mother Brain's own power against her, destroying her and setting off a chain of events that would destroy the entirety of planet Zebus as opposed to only the facility like last time. Samus escaped the explosion and flew off into space, bidding farewell to her old home planet. Metroid Other M in this game, Samus ends up having the remaining cells from Pop Rock removed from her suit, which she donates to the Federation Force so they can clone more Metroids from them. Samus over here making her own economy. After this, she receives a distress signal and goes to check it out, finding a research vessel known as the Bottle Ship. As it turns out, she is not the only one who received the signal. Inside, she finds her old squad, including Anthony Higgs and Adam Malkovich. They work together to discover the secret of the facility. As they do so, she discovers a small yellow creature known as Little Birdie that stares at her for a while before running off. As it turns out, the bottle ship was a facility where biological weapons were under development by Madeline Bergman. Outside of the command center, soldiers were being attacked by an odd lizard creature of large proportions. 
Samus and the remaining soldiers drive it off, with Samus later confirming that this creature was itself the next evolution of the little birdie from earlier. She chases after it as it flees into the pyrosphere, but proceeds to head for the cryosphere instead after being ordered to. Entering the cryosphere, she discovers the body of Maurice Favreau along with a little girl nearby. After rescuing the girl, Samus returns to the pyrosphere where she discovers that the lizard and little birdie were actually the early stages of the clone of her nemesis, Ridley. Ridley manages to kill Anthony Higgs, enraging Samus, who drives the beast off. As she heads for the bioweapons research center, she encounters the young woman again, who declares herself to be Madeline Bergman, and explains what the bottle ship was doing. She explains that they had planned to create a special forces unit based on the space pirates, and that they had created metroids that were immune to their weakness to ice. She also says that they made an AI based on Mother Brain that they called MB, and that this was all located in Zero Sector. Samus was to go to this sector and destroy everything there, but before she could, Adam stops her and goes in to do it himself, resulting in the destruction of the sector and Adam's death. After this, she heads for the bioweapons research facility where a survivor remained, along with Ridley. Entering the facility, she finds that Ridley is already dead and that the survivor is a woman who claims to be Madeline Bergman. She begins to explain that the girl she met earlier was actually the real MB. At this, MB enters the room to kill them, but is eventually destroyed by Federation Force troops. Samus is congratulated by the Colonel, but is removed from the situation due to not being a member of the Galactic Federation any longer. Despite this, as it turns out, Anthony Higgs survived his encounter with Ridley due to his quick thinking. He escorts Samus to her ship so she may leave. A few days later, she returns, just before the ship is destroyed, to retrieve the Helmet of Adam. During this, she must face off against Fantoon before escaping. Metroid Fusion Aiding a research team on SR-388, Samus accidentally comes into contact with a strange parasite after destroying an infected creature. While leaving the planet, Samus loses control of her ship and crashes, but is rescued by the Galactic Federation. Taken to a research facility, they discovered that these things were known as X-Parasites, and they had infected Samus and her suit. Having removed as much of the suit as they could, they had no other choice but to inject her with a vaccine made from the cells of the baby Metroid she had saved in Return of Samus. This was due to the Metroids apparently being a natural predator to the X-Parasites, which is why Samus hadn't encountered them before, which is why the vaccine should allow her to absorb the X-Parasites herself. However, this came with the downside of her now being weakened to the cold. Technically, this also makes this the first game where you wouldn't be wrong to call her by the name Metroid. Her armor pieces are then sent off to the Biologic Space Laboratories to be studied. Samus would eventually head to the station. She was given a new AI commanding officer based on the mind of Adam Malkovich, which she decided to name Adam in his honor. Reaching the facility, they found it in disrepair, having been overrun. During her time here attempting to destroy the parasites, she discovers that she isn't alone and that she's being hunted. She finds out that her suit has been recreated and commandeered by the X-Parasites that now collectively become a new being known as SAX. The SAX proceeds to follow her through the facility and breaks into the restricted lab where they find cloned Metroids. The SAX proceeds to free the Metroids and attempt to destroy them as they were its only known predator, but now it's transformed itself into the Metroids' only known predator, Samus. After this, Samus prepared to destroy the facility to eliminate the X-Parasite and the SAX. Adam got in the way, however, and after a lengthy debate about it, it allowed her to do as she pleased, but told her that she needed to destroy the facility along with SR-388 to get rid of the X forever. And so, after setting the facility on a collision course with SR-388, she attempted to head for her ship. Before she could, however, she encountered a dangerous Omega Metroid that nearly killed her. Not long after, the SAX showed up to attack it as well. It defeated the SAX and Samus absorbed it to regain all of her abilities. She managed to defeat the Omega Metroid and escape the facility before it crashed into the planet, taking out both in the ensuing explosion. Metroid Dread The most recent entry in the timeline after the events of Fusion, Samus is sent to a planet called ZDR by the Federation after X-Parasites were found on the surface. They had sent ME robots to search it out, but lost contact and now needed Samus to recover them. When she arrives, however, she finds Ravenbeak, a Chozo warrior who wishes to control the Metroids and clone them from Samus' cells. He defeats her, but spares her, though her suit loses much of its upgrades in the process. She begins to ascend, destroying various ME robots along the way, each of them reprogrammed to hunt her. As she ascends from the depths, she meets another Chozo named Quiet Robe, who tells her of Ravenbeak's plot with her. Quiet Robe is then killed. Samus proceeds to climb to the surface, and she's set to face Ravenbeak. Along the way, she discovers X-Parasites, which are unleashed by Ravenbeak. Samus realizes that she may actually be turning into a Metroid and displays the ability to absorb energy. As she escapes and confronts Ravenbeak, he informs her that he's the one who's been talking to her, and that Adam, who's been guiding her across ZDR, is none other than Ravenbeak himself. 
But in a real Darth Vader type of twist, Ravenbeak explains that the second source of Chozo DNA in her system was actually donated by him, making Ravenbeak a de facto biological father to her. The two duel, but Samus loses again. However, as she understands that Ravenbeak was responsible for massacring the Chozo on SR388, as well as remembering his hand in the murder of Quiet Robe, she becomes infuriated and evolves further as a Metroid, gaining her Metroid suit, which allows her to absorb all of the energy around her, including from Ravenbeak as well as from his flying fortress, causing both to crash to the surface. On the surface, Ravenbeak is attacked by the X-Parasite and assimilated. Samus then must face and defeat Ravenbeak X, Doing so causes the planet to begin the process of self-destructing. Samus races back to her ship, but as she plans to escape, the real Adam tells her that her new properties will drain the ship of energy. With no other way off, Samus begins to worry, but at this time, Quiet Robe, having been assimilated by X-Parasites, proceeds to approach her and allows himself to be absorbed by her in hopes of reversing the transformation, which works. Returning to normal, Samus takes to the stars and escapes just before the planet explodes, eradicating the X-Parasites for good. And that, my friends, is the complete timeline of Metroid up to this point in chronological order. With all that, you should now be ready to take on Metroid Prime 4 when it releases, or frankly, any other Metroid game as it releases. I'm slightly hoping that Nintendo releases Prime 2 and 3 on Switch before Prime 4 releases so I can get caught up. But even if they don't, at least we'll be able to get into it knowing the background. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to know when more videos like this drop. And check out these other cool videos done by the leaderboard. Until next time, peace out.